What does a food desert look like in Hamilton? A ground zero approach. Food and accessibility in East Hamilton was a growing topic, evident with the construction of the McQuestern Urban Farm and a community garden on Barton Street. However, despite the implementation of these solutions from 2014 to 2016, food desert concerns raised by the city's residents in 2017 with the closure of no-fills were not mitigated. With the closure of Georgia's no-fills in April 2016, access to full-service grocery stores, also known as supermarkets and superstores, became a rising concern for the residents of the Crown Point neighborhood in East Hamilton. Due to these concerns, an assets-based community collaboration with McMaster University presented students the opportunity to identify food desert determinants to guide the neighborhood partners towards identifying what a food desert is, as well as parallel and contrast the identified determinants of food deserts with the conditions that exist in Crown Point. The conclusions outlined will work together to aid neighborhood representatives in determining the strategy they wish to devise with and for the Crown Point community. This will be done from a ground zero approach, analyzing the factors present in the neighborhood itself and applying the determinants identified in a community-engaged academic perspective. Thus, what does a food desert mean to the Crown Point Hamilton neighborhood? In Crown Point, there is a lot of grocery stores in the north end of the city. Um, in the south end of the city, not so much. There's very few. And Crown Point the, the, is part of a neighborhood action strategy. And as part of that, we have what's called a planning team. And the role of the planning team is to, is to set goals and, and work to achieve them. And, and we have missions, visions, values. And part of that is a walkable community. So. For Crown Point, not to have a grocery store that you can walk to is, is a problem. Not just because in terms of that, the, the, the neighborhood action strategy, but it's a problem for, for people who don't drive. And there's many people in Crown Point who don't drive for various reasons. They don't drive um, because they have mobility issues. They don't drive because they're vehicle, they've lost access to their vehicle due to their age or, or other reasons. They don't drive because they can't afford it. And there's people who don't drive by choice. And so for these people to not have a grocery store that's, that's accessible to them um, is, is, is a challenge, particularly if they do have mobility issues and if they do have children. Um, because we've measured it and from the location of the former Delta to the, to the grocery store at, at Metro or, or at Barton is a kilometer and a half or better. So that's quite a, a distance to have to walk if you're carrying children or you're on some kind of mobility device and you're trying to manage groceries at the same time. In application to the neighborhood, Crown Point is a diverse community with a high proportion of at-risk and vulnerable households according to the Hamilton Spectator's Code Red series. Despite this notion, food deserts are not an income-dependent issue, with Crown Point harboring middle-class households and an Ottawa Street renaissance. However, since Georgia's no-fills closure, residents of Crown Point have had to travel a greater distance to the other grocery stores, Metro and Fresh Co., on the center at Barton, which are 1.5 and 1.8 kilometers away from the original no-fills, respectively. For the same reason that, that the distance to Barton isn't a solution. So think about having to get on a bus and travel a couple of kilometers in order to get groceries, carrying your bundle buggy with you, or your kids, or towing your kids with you, or, or, or having to get on a mobility device. I just came from a, a trip out of the city, actually, and I came home by go, and then I got on a bus, and I'm just carrying maybe 20 pounds in a bag, a suitcase, and on a crowded bus, and it was very, very difficult. So you try to imagine what it's like for someone trying to do the same trip, carrying far more, carrying loose bags, carrying things that can fall out of bags, trying to get a bundle buggy onto the bus that's crowded and packed. You can imagine how difficult that would be. So buses on their own, I don't think, are a very good solution to the, the question of a walkable grocery store. The lack of a personal vehicle, poor bus routes, unsafe parking lot crossings, and the absence of pedestrian-friendly walkways are some of the barriers inhibiting access to these superstore grocery store options. These factors come down to walkability. As a result, the search for local food options has residents turning to their nearest convenience store or fast food restaurant 
raising concerns about communal equity and nutritional status. For a number of reasons. First um, is accessibility. So the farmer's market on Ottawa Street, for example, is terrific if you have Saturday available and you can plan for an entire week. If planning um, doesn't work for you or if you're not available on Saturday, then what options remain? Um, community gardens are terrific ideas and they're terrific for the community. But one, they're limited in scope in terms of how many people can have a community garden. And second, again, you need to have gardening skills. There's a certain knowledge that comes with that. And there's a time commitment. You can't just have a community garden and grow something and then go and harvest it. You have to look after it. And one of the things that, that we recognize is that for people who work and who have children and, and, and who may have precarious employment, Time is, is a critical asset. Um, people are often don't have the time to be able to spend doing the types of work that's involved in maintaining volunteer activities, whether it's a community garden or whether it's urban farming, or, or even for that matter, just getting to a, a farmer's market on the weekend. In terms of the boutique stores on Ottawa Street, the, the stores that, like for example, the Honest Meat Company, Again, that's a terrific asset to the, to the neighborhood, but it's not affordable for everyone. Um, it's great that if you can't afford to buy that kind of quality meat, but if you have a whole family to feed and you're on a, on a, on a limited income, then it, not, it becomes not a viable option. So uh, again, the, the, for most people, there needs to be a grocery store that has hours that are accessible throughout the day at different times of the day and to be able to not just get food, but also to get other grocery products, whether it be diapers or, or, or everyday requirements to get, through, to get through life, right? And so we don't have that on the south end of Crown Point. In fact, I would even argue that even though it's there on the north end, it's not really accessible to everyone that lives up there because of the fact that there's no overpass or the train tracks for people to easily access those grocery stores. They have to, it's about a kilometer around that. So I don't think it's just an issue for, for the south end of Crown Point, but um, yeah, I don't think the solutions are, are that the existing solutions work in place of a grocery store. Walk uh, on campus, um, but even for me, I would say that it was fairly difficult and strenuous to walk. And especially the fact that we had our backpacks on. So I can't really imagine a mom or a parent carrying uh, four or five grocery bags um, all the way from, from Delta to, uh, to Walmart or to the, to the plaza um, on Barton Street. And also, I would say that for residents around that area, No Frills must have been a key grocery store for them. Um, and it must have been devastating for them to have to either change a lot of their schedules around the shutdown of No Frills. The phrase food deserts was first coined in a 1966 National Commission food marketing study in the United States that identified a pattern of food deserts in low-income areas of six large cities. But what does the phrase mean? The phrase food desert has accumulated various approaches since 1966. A literature review study of the phrase revealed that from 1966, to 2007, food desert was defined in numerous published studies. Specifically, there were three studies from 1960s, two from the 1970s, two in the 1980s, 12 in the 1990s, and 29 from 2000 to 2007. One systematic review shortlisted 49 studies to analyze, which included 22 market studies, 17 geographic studies, and 10 mixed method studies. These were selected following the critical appraisal of 2,826 literature search results. I conducted a literature review to identify the determinants of food deserts as well as to identify what encompassed food deserts. This led me to a systematic review by Bulak et al. that was published in 2009 and they defined food deserts as areas characterized by poor access to healthy and affordable food that may contribute to social and spatial disparities in diet and diet related outcomes. I also identified recurring determinants. Um, these include low-income neighborhoods as well as geographical distance. Um, distance as in the distance to the nearest grocery store or superstore or even a combination of both. 
I also identified that the determinants um, looked at specifically uh, food items in a general sense or food and non-food items um, such as full service providers uh, such as superstores as well as healthy food options that specifically looked at um, the availability and accessibility of fresh fruits and vegetables. Others have identified that food deserts broadly define limited access, whether that pertains to distance, price, or time costs. Thus, they are unspecific to low-income neighborhoods or one's food choices. That is, canned and frozen foods are just as valuable as fruits and vegetables that have a shorter shelf life and take time to cook. In other words, although the phrase food desert has been approached and defined from varying manners and different perspectives, its existence as well as its determinants are inconclusive. Why? Because food deserts encompass a multidimensional framework, which means that what determines whether a food desert exists is situation and area dependent. What this means for us is that there is no clear consensus in what specifically entails or determines a food desert. In other words, there is no XYZ formula that will allow us to conclude whether Crown Point is a food desert. What we can conclude is that there are areas facing food accessibility issues due to barriers or a barrier that is present in the community or neighborhood. Whether we look to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Shenzhen, China, or Seattle King County, Washington, the various constituents of a food desert varies in the research studies to fit the food and accessibility issues that the neighborhood, community, or target population is facing. To name a few of these barriers, they have been identified as public transportation voucher frequencies, geographical distance, a lack of a personal vehicle, income, vegetable and fruit options, or high cost food providers, whether cost is defined strictly in a monetary sense or in terms of transportation and or availability. Therefore, in determining whether Crown Point is a food desert, it's important to assess the various aspects that are present in the neighborhood to determine whether they present as an aid to access or a barrier. I wonder if you know what asset-based community development is, and that, I mean, really what we're trying to do with communities is, is discover from our engagement with communities what their assets are and to make a point of, of addressing issues that are important to communities through their own lens. So what kind of assets do they have? What can they bring forward to, to address their own concerns versus us as providers or as educators? Um, making choices for community members is it's clearly something that we try to promote. It's, it's about working with communities. It's, it's about what communities believe are the, are the concerns. Um, multiple definitions of, of food deserts exist in the literature. And, I mean, no one has one idea of what that means. So if you want to address uh, food security or food deserts within within uh, the Crown Point community, you really have to ask people there what they need, what they mean by that, and what they see as solutions for addressing their concerns. And perhaps it's not everyone's concern. So again, who do you who has the answer to that within the community? We have this concept that that um, people in community um, are one group and not necessarily so. So it, there may be a variety of ways of looking at uh, food deserts and then how people would address that may be very different depending on who you're speaking to. Thus, we can conclude that barriers exist in access to food and non-food 